from the new recording lair located deep beneath the Wine and Spirit Store in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. You're listening to the Masonic Light Podcast. Studio 665 presents Masonic Light Podcast. The show is recorded by Masons, for Masons, and is for entertainment purposes only. And please, no wagering. This podcast is not endorsed by any Grand Lodge, and the ridiculous ramblings of the hosts are their own. And now, here's your host. Hey everybody, it's the Masonic Light Podcast. Hello. Episode number 173. What? 173. That's a lot of episodes. That is. More than four. Larry, what are you doing? You doing a crossword? Yeah. What? I think he's playing Sudoku. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, okay. I tried. So, we have a full house tonight. Yes, we do. And there's a story behind that, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> We're all shirking. <laughs> we have Larry, Jack, Josh, and myself, Tim. And uh, we have a guest co-host tonight, Ricky Martini. Thank you. Yeah. Harrisburg Lodge number 629. Yes. yes. All right. In Harrisburg, PA. Huzzah. Did, and you, did you mention Jack and Jack? Or did you call him John? It's a pair of Jacks. I haven't, I haven't introduced this oh, guest for tonight. I'm, yeah, I'm feeling bad. You, did, you just bypassed I'm, him. I'm, I'm going to him oh next if you'll give me a minute. Oh, jeez. Settle down. For the Jack Bropes, past district deputy grand master in Pennsylvania of district... 58. 58. I can never remember your all's numbers. 58. So, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Yay. 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 All right. So, you know. <laughs> I'm so enthusiastic. Until about two hours ago, we weren't exactly sure how many people we were going to have here tonight. Nope. Um, it was going to be greater than three. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and less than like eight. So, um, again, we're good, glad to have so everybody many, here. Tonight. You got five, six, right? Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six. We have six now. But Look at yeah. that. I can count. You can. Very good. <clears throat> One more and we're at fire code. I didn't even take off my shoes. <laughs> yeah. It's early. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, there'll be four if we, I take off my shoes. Don't worry. The audit alarm is ringing. We'll talk about that later. Um, anyway, uh, so what we do, guys, is we begin our show with talking about what we've been doing recently in our Masonic careers, oh, lives, whatever. Uh, Larry, other than eating breakfast, what have you been doing? But that's important. It is. It's the best Actually, meal it's of the day. It's the most important I'm, meal of the day. I'm, I'm estimating we started our 18th year of Grease and Gridiron every Thursday morning. 18 years. That's, there are lodges that don't last that long. I'm not really, going really to argue with you. But here's the biggie. I went to Grotto. On you Sunday. did, yay! And I got to carry the sword, no. the Ubaratar. Yeah, he, oh, Ubaratar. Yeah. They he gave you he, a he, sharp he, object. And yes, apparently there did. were there were wagers on what would happen if I fell with that thing. It was a pointy thing. <laughs> he did not cut himself. <laughs> he was good. You can't cut yourself with that thing. We were. You could break bones, but not cut yourself. <laughs> we had a health risk going on there. Extra <laughs> insurance was given there. That's night. right. So uh, yeah, that's right. You were. That's, that's right. Great. It he was is, awesome. It was awesome. Now the, uh, it was. It was like, it was like going back to old home week. It was so many people I know, and uh, we were there. And it was. It was. And it see was what good. you missed by not coming to Grotto. Yeah, I did. Aren't you glad? And that's why I'm back. So we we had to put Larry in a chair to get him to come back. So uh, <laughs> anyway, but yeah. that's great. It's great. Jack, how about you? Jack number one. Well, um, I had let me let me open my cheat sheet. Oh no! So we had uh, we we recorded on the thirteenth. So we had Academy of Masonic Knowledge on the sixteenth. That was very interesting. Um, we had what else did I have? Oh, on the twentieth on Wednesday, we had our first official foray into the combined. First and second degrees. How'd that work for you? Well, um, we had it, and Good. it, um, yeah, okay, it was a thing. All right. So um, I had them into the lodge on Monday night uh-huh. for mentoring and education. Yep. And they're um, they're very interested. They want 
They want the rest of it. They yep. want they want the hard part. They want to learn the oath and obligation. Good. And they want to they want the real deal. Good. So they're going to get that. Good. Um, and then um, tonight I was supposed to be at the Lehigh Valley Joshua Association, <laughs> yeah. named after our own uh, Josh Lamberton, uh, who's <laughs> apparently eighty five years old because that's the how old the, that society is. Uh, but it's pouring down rain outside and driving in the dark in the rain is my second least favorite thing to do. So I opted to come here instead and charm you all with my wit and wisdom. Oh, well, we're glad that you made the right decision. Ta-da. Great. So <laughs> Jack number two, <laughs> Sound like what have you been it. up to Masonically recently? Jack number two has been on the road uh, traveling with the Grandmaster as one of his aides um, doing the... Uh, officer training for the Blue Lodge Revitalization Committee. Last night I spent some time with Robert Burns Lodge in Harrisburg at their very nice banquet, and uh, it's been quite busy. So I've been out and about just about every night. When did you ever have time to be a district deputy? Oh, you find time. (laughs) You do find time. My wife told me tonight, she's like, you know, I miss you. I'm like, oh, you'll see me tonight about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Hey. Ooh. We'll get you home sooner than yeah, that. Yeah, one night a month. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank Ricky, you how about you? Well, the, earlier this month, I uh, helped confer a first and second degree for, uh, okay. for our Blue Lodge. We did the new advanced. Combined degree. Combined degree. And uh, it went very well. Uh, we didn't miss a beat on it. It definitely was a little... Shorter on the second degree part, but I mean it's still a long evening doing two degrees on one candidate. We we had two candidates, so each one got two degrees. So we did a long and a short first, and then we did a combined second. And I don't really like the combined second. We had two guys at the altar at once, and I Heresy. I will never do that again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's got to be a little confusing. And yeah, it just it didn't no one, feel right. No one knows who you're talking to. Right. This right. Guy, this guy, can't oh, but it's just that. the second degree. That's a throwaway. Right? <laughs> and then uh, we had Cigar Lodge on Sunday. We did. To start off the afternoon, which was very nice weather, mm-hmm. very nice turnout. Excellent turnout. Yeah, over, over, over 30. 30. Over 35 people. Yeah, yeah. very nice. And then uh, someone uh, convinced me to uh, join them at the Uber Grotto meeting what a jerk who would do that <laughs> someone <laughs> someone in this room <laughs> you don't even get points for that it was come so on. easy it was so easy ricky what are you doing tonight nothing great come with me done get in the car <laughs> and before we left he had a petition in there you go <laughs> yep uh last night again i was at uh robert burns uh banquet the annual banquet which is very nice uh it was very put on uh great by the uh staff there the officers they did a great job Got to see a lot of people I don't get to see often, which is good. And uh, again, this evening was uh, a Lehigh Valley Joshua's Association. Wait, did you cut that? He did. Yes, I did. Oh, man. There's and, three of you. That you cut. know, but I'm sure Jack Brobst went because he's <laughs> he's qualified to be a member of the Lehigh <laughs> Valley. No, actually, I, I thought this was much more important than the Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I passed on that as well. Nice. So, so I think and it was we, raining a lot, night driving in rain. Isn't I think we this, should take a picture true. and send it to them, and maybe they'll count you as present. I, we can do that. I paid for dinner, so I'm you same know, here. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, good. You good? That's everything. All right, Josh. I did not go to Grotto. You did not. I know. We looked at your house. Yeah. From, yeah. The, from <laughs> actually, <laughs> from Ricky, and I, Ricky and I drove past it. Oh, really? Because we were coming from Cigar Lodge into. Uh, oh, was that the house you were throwing stuff at? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's where I threw, when I threw the cup out the window. Yeah, got it. Was I, front I, yard. I was a wonder. No, that explains everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did some audit stuff. Oh, very good. Uh, <gasps> but other than that, are you on uh, Lamberville's uh, audit committee? No, but I'm in charge of funds, so oh, I have to do your thing. Do my thing. Cool. Very good. All right. So, um, what have I been up to? I went. To, uh, actually, I remotely attended the academy. Ah, uh-huh. um, I did too. You did. Yeah, and I you guess. even texted me to say it wasn't working. Stolen it valor. Wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they got a new link. All right, Harrisburg Council Number Seven. Uh, we and a half ago now, uh, where I was installed thrice illustrious master. Wow, congratulations, Tim. Actually, I have Pete to blame for that. Uh, several years ago, 
uh, when he was thrice illustrious master, he said, you really ought to do this. And I'm like, I've been a member for what? Next thing you know, I'm in the chairs and here I am. Um, <clears throat> on Saturday, um, I attended the <laughs> Masonic service of our good friend, Tim Settlemeyer. Many of you all know him or knew him. Yes. Um, he was a Mason extraordinaire and uh, there was a great turnout uh, of the brethren uh, over in Carlisle. And he's so. he's in a very he's in a different like area of the state than right, I am, right. and and we only really overlapped at Grotto. Right, I had no idea what an involved Mason he was. Mm-hmm. Um, he he re- his Masonic resume is really, uh, really impressive, and the fraternity will miss will miss him. Well, it's really sad. Mm-hmm. He's, he was only fifty three years old. Right, that's two fifty three year olds in the last year. Yeah, that's that's oh. not good. That's very sad. Very sad. Way too young. Uh, I also attended Cigar Lodge and Uber Grotto, and I also attended the Robert Burns Banquet um, last night, and uh, we had our own version of Cigar Lodge afterwards. And uh, then today, I uh, uh, conducted an interview with the Grand Master, Larry A. Durr. Did he uh, get the job? Uh, well, it wasn't a job interview. Oh, okay. Um, it was one for uh, the upcoming... 250th birthday of our country coming up in a couple of years. Uh, Grand Lodge is putting together a series of videos promoting that and encouraging lodges to how they can get involved in that. What did you do? I didn't do anything. You popped something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I that always was. worry about you, brother. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we're off to a rip roaring start here. So uh, let's good. take a break and make sure Larry's still in one piece. And uh, we're going to come back with our guest, Jack Brooks. <laughs> Why choose George J. Grove and Sons for your next home improvement project? At George J. Grove and Sons, we've built our reputation on quality and trust for more than 50 years. For planning, to materials, to installation, George J. Grove promises a home improvement experience second to none. Whether your goal is reducing energy costs, decreasing maintenance, updating curb appeal, or simply increasing the value of your home, the George J. Grove team will recommend and provide solutions that stand the test of time. Call 717-393-0859 for an estimate or visit us at georgejgrove.com. And we're back. What? Uh, tonight's guest is Brother Jack Brooks, and our guest host is Brother Ricky Martini. So, Ricky, take it away. <laughs> so, so, Jack. No wh- pressure. What's your favorite color? <laughs> My favorite color is blue. red, blue. but I have to say blue for Blue, blue Lodge. Blue. Nice. There you go. Jack, uh, I saw you yesterday at the Burns Banquet. It's great to see you and have a cigar with you. And we had some great talks, which mm-hmm. was great. Um Last time I think I saw you in Lodge was at Harrisburg Snyder Lodge last Larry, year. Yes. Ask him a question, Larry. For the um, – <laughs> That's an inside joke. That's an inside joke. Sorry. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you'll understand when you listen to 40 more episodes. For the Masonic Jeopardy. Oh, yes. Which yes. I was uh, very uh, – I'm a sore loser sometimes, and I, I it, was a, it was a tough battle, but, but my group won, which is great. It's it's quite the uh, it's taken a quite a, a life of its own. Um, actually, I'm coming back there in the beginning of May. Yes, to I, do the same thing. So, so talk yeah. about it breaking the Jeopardy. Or what? Yeah, it was, I mean, is is there fighting? Is there? There could be. It could. Yeah. 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 Right, I, I mean, mean, it's I it's come pretty close to fisticuffs sometimes. I, I, you know, I, 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 when I, the I, points I, get close. So, <laughs> uh, actually, it was a program that I came up with uh, as worshipful master of Pulaski Lodge Number Two Hundred Sixteen in Pottsville. And uh, just to, for Masonic education, I was always in education, always loved it. So I thought, what better than having Masonic Jeopardy and played like Jeopardy? So I split the lodges up into 
two teams, one on each side. The Worshipful Master is the uh, judge and the scorekeeper, and I'm the quiz master. And I have uh, various topics from history, famous Freemasons, Masonic law, ritual, and uh, we go through, and there's easy questions, one-pointers, and there's really hard questions that are three-pointers. I got one. You have a daily double? I got one. Yes. I got one. Secretaries say it every December. Pay your damn dues. There you go. What is pay what your is damn pay dues? Your Thank you very much. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to add that. <laughs> I'll add that one just for you guys. But uh, yeah, so they have buzzers. They get to oh, no buzz way. in oh, and everything. Really? Oh, and, that's hilarious. And we play until we have you know the worshipful master says okay enough. But you know, <laughs> typically it's funny because you know I try to keep it to 20 minutes, and usually we go an hour because everybody's having so much fun. That is great. Uh, and then at the end, we have Final Jeopardy. So they wager their points, and that's when the, that's when the fun begins. Yeah, it gets a little intense. Yeah. So. Wow. And there's some trick questions in there that you really, it, you know, especially in ritual, that you have to know your ritual to get them correct. And uh, I always said, as long as somebody walks out of there learning something new, one thing, I've done my job. That's fantastic. I so I've been it. making those rounds pretty frequently now since I have retired as deputy. Put nice. that in a box and sell it across the Commonwealth. You could do that. I actually joke with the guys <laughs> because everybody comes up to me afterwards and said, hey, can I get a copy of that? And I show them the front of my book, the binder, and I have a little copyright symbol on it. No. It's well, not copyrighted. It. Well, that's yeah. all right. Nobody it could be okay. Yeah. Now, one yeah. thing that's new for me, I, I've never interviewed this person, like this kind of person before. But since you're now past district deputy grandmaster, now you're an aide to the grandmaster. What does that entail? Basically, you uh, assist the Grand Lodge with whatever they need. So we are most active at uh, Grand Lodge quarterlies. So we'll make sure things are in line. Uh, you know, at the Lancaster quarterly, we had some guy selling tickets out in the hallway that I had to keep an eye on because he was kind of squirrely. But uh, he's definitely not a trustworthy dude. <laughs> no, I know that guy. <laughs> But, you make a uh, good treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you get assigned to, uh, like, the Grandmaster Durr. Um, Henry Fedorovich is his direct aide. So Henry travels with him and, and does what he needs. And then, uh, depending on what the other right worshipfuls need, or I help the uh, Grand Tyler and whatever else, I tend to look for things to do. I'm not a stand-in-the-corner kind of person. So We had a whole herd of them when, it, we had, when the Grandmaster was here a couple of weeks ago. There was like AIDS running around. It was like a herd of chipmunks running yeah. around, just trying to make sure everything was tight. Yeah. So yeah, so when we go on to when we visit lodges with the, the Grand Lodge, um, of course we take the photo of the officers, hand out pin, hand out the pins, the Grand Master's pins, and make sure that the regalia is in place and everybody's in line and everything else. But it's an interesting job. You're doing great. Keep it up. Yeah, Ricky, we're going to leave, and we'll come back in about an hour, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. Well, I, I think one thing that we were talking about earlier, uh, before we started, was um, a topic that was brought up in discussion, but we really didn't get much into it, was uh, talking about the Infinity Lodge. Okay. Affinity. 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 Affinity, Affinity. Affinity with an A. Some lodges are Infinity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. one or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it really... It became more interesting with Cigar Lodge, number one. So when Grandmaster Herrett gave us our, and I'm doing air quotes, uh, our warrant of constitution for our lodge, it was amazing how many people contacted myself and Ed Stum, our right worshipful Grand Smoke, about <laughs> starting their own and wanting to know if we would help them charter their own. And trying to explain to them that it's not really a real thing. Um, <laughs> although but we it do, can be. We do have a warrant. If and, you believe it is, yes, then absolutely. it is. Um, so that got us discussing uh, affinity lodges. And it's something that you find mostly over in London, uh, in England, mm -hmm. uh, where like-minded people, doctors, lawyers, pharmacists, they form their own lodges. Rock or, musicians, yes. among other California groups. has yeah. a bunch of them. And yeah. I heard the guy speak one time, and like, there's a soccer lodge. Mm -hmm. And there's, you name it, and there's a lodge that forms around it. 
the, so. the speaker at uh, the academy this past weekend uh, with magician as in ma- uh, the Affinity Magicians Lodge in Hollywood. Yeah, excellent. Cup and Ball Lodge. That was the name of Didn't his, think I his listened lodge. To that, didn't. But ball. it it if for it's not it's not being um, it's not being warmly received. Um, by the powers that be in Pennsylvania, um, and and that's okay, but people who want to get together are looking for a way to get together, a reason to get together under a Masonic umbrella. Why do you, why do you suppose that is? I mean, what is it about that? Well, you know, you have, and you can see it from the cigar lodge, where of course everybody's a cigar smoker or wants to be a cigar smoker, and we're all mostly Masons, but it's becoming more and more frequent now that we're having non-masons join us Mm -hmm. and you share that that love of cigars or whatever i mean i have a lot of people asking to do penn state alumni Mm -hmm. type lodges and uh (laughs) we could create a whole new grand lodge from that oh absolutely (laughs) (laughs) and it, it was funny because jack jack number one and i were down at uh vox lodge uh performing our our committee chair per, or committee chair or I'm sorry committee person duties with uh, engagement and uh, revitalization and we decided to stop over and have a smoke together and we started talking and of course that led to some really in-depth Masonic topics and one of them was affinity so he said you know this might be a great topic to bring and then miraculously at Academy it was one of the topics with the Magicians Lodge cup and ball so uh I really think it's it's something good, uh, provided that it's done right. Uh, I've had this discussion many times over with some some of the other brethren uh, that are interested in cigar lodges, or you know, I know right now bourbon lodges, that kind of stuff. But yeah, or or trap shooting lodge, sure. or trout fishing lodge, or whatever. And and there's something about those things that the that creates a brotherhood around it. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got the motorcycle groups, right? We've yep. got Hiram Scottish Riders and Scottish Ride. You've got the Widow's Sons, and there's a couple of other Masonic Riders groups. Uh, those those are almost affinity lodges, but they're not recognized necessarily by the Grand Lodge. But, but they're well, close. I think, I think one of the things, the, the way that we're discussing it here, I think is, at least for us now, the appropriate way to do it, where we call it a cigar lodge or whatever, and we have the quote unquote air quotes around it, yeah. air quotes around well, the charter, but it's it's kind of a organic mm-hmm. thing that happens, and so there's nothing to stop um, people from doing people from doing this, right. and whether or not the Grand Lodge gives you a little you know quasi certificate or not is a different matter, but you can right. still get together and do that. This is kind of a stretch, a traditional observant lodge is kind of like an affinity lodge yeah. because it's yeah. made mm-hmm. up yeah. of men who want certain things to take place in that lodge that generally don't happen in the Blue Lodges in Pennsylvania. Yeah, they want that formality. Exactly. They, they want, want that, that formality. Yeah. Yep. They want that mm-hmm. uh, the, the big meal. Oh, get it, what do we call it? Uh, Festive board. Thank you very much. <laughs> Festive board. They want all of that, which is very European, by the way. Uh, so to me, that's kind of like it, but not quite. In, in our jurisdiction, for example, though, the, the uh, traditional observance lodges actually are lodges. Yes. I mean, yes. Yeah, they're they, warranted blue lodges. They're warranted yes. blue lodges that just follow a slightly different path. Right. Um, exactly. But they're men who want correct. that. Correct. And they, they gravitate toward that. Yes. So are we kind of sort of sliding into affinity lodges sideways? Because we've now got a day lodge in... Well, you've got one up in Allentown. in Allentown. You've got now one in Elizabethtown. Those are kind of sort of affinity lodges. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know, are, are we are we getting there? Accidentally, I think we're slowly getting there. Uh, you know, between the traditional observance lodges and the day lodges, uh, because really, what better mechanism would you have to not only get people out to lodge, but also bring new people in the lodge? Yeah. Because those guys are going to bring their friends to events. Of course, they're not going to bring. Well, they could really bring them to a meeting if they're not a formal meeting, mm-hmm. and say, "Hey, we're all Freemasons. Mm-hmm. What better way to get more members and get interested members?" I, I would love to see how many people joined Freemasonry through Cigar Lodge. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think there's any way to track that, but other than asking people, but but I'm sure there have been. Go ahead. What? No, I was just going to say I know of of one person in particular when I can't remember who all it was, but we were at I want to say I think we were at DNS over in Lancaster, and me and Jay Laser, Laser and a couple of others <laughs> were sitting around talking after an academy meeting one day, and this guy came up and says are you guys Masons? Mm-hmm. And we're like, yeah. He goes, well, you know, that's something that's always been of interest to me. Mm-hmm. And so we began a conversation, and long story short, I ended up inviting him to a cigar lodge event. Um, and That wasn't Carlos? N- no. Okay. No, no. Okay. Uh, but we got him connected with a lodge, and he joined. Yeah. And... So, I, I, I think I think there's been a lot of them. Yeah. I, I'd love yeah. to track how many people have joined. It's interesting. When we first started Goose and Gridiron years ago, we had three people come. We just invited men. And three of the people that would show up out of the first seven or eight of us that would meet were not Masons. And are they now? Yeah, they are now. There you go. Yes. Yeah, typically we have two or three non-Masons mm-hmm. at Cigar Lodge. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have pulled, I know one that, uh, in fact, I just went to his third degree in Sunbury. Oh, cool. And he's actually a cigar store owner. And there was a oh, bunch, of, even bunch of Masons that went to his store. Descended on his store. Absolutely. Like locust. And uh, <laughs> the, the Hiram and Solomon um, cigar rep was there cool. doing a presentation. And, you know, of course, we're all talk, chit-chatting about cigars and Freemasonry and everything else. And he looks over at at this gentleman and he goes um yeah why aren't you petition nice so he just got his third degree two weeks ago bam then we all went up there and visited him and so one of the things though if you look at the affinity lodges in europe especially in england um great britain uk whatever they're called this week I'll leave. um but the um and i apologize to all my british friends that's that's insulting and i apologize um but they have lodges open and close all the time. Like they're into the thousands of, you know, numbers of lodges because they open, they're, they're alive for a couple of years, 10, 15, whatever, and then they close again. And, and no, then there's no gnashing of teeth and wailing and, oh, my God, a lodge closed. It just, it just closed because that lodge had run its course. Right. Um, in, in our world, that's, ana- that's anathema. I mean, we... We don't want to close a lot. Well, I mean, we're not going to close any lodges this year, right, mm-hmm. uh, for the next two. Well, we're not um, going to allow mergers. Well, we're not going to allow mergers, but all right. So if anyway, notwithstanding. But the point is that it's a horrible thing when a lodge closes in Pennsylvania. It's, it's, right. it's, it's the end of the world as we know it. Um, but for them, it, it's not so much because they, they've got lodges opening and closing all the time. Um, we had a friend, um, Dan Madrigal, who was mm-hmm. on the show who was trying to start a, a Spanish-speaking lodge in Pennsylvania. And um, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't make the hurdle uh, in Pennsylvania right. um, because the, the, the requirement was so high. So they, they went across the river to Camden, and they had a lodge in, in three months. Uh, the Grand Lodge in New Jersey chartered, chartered their lodge, mm-hmm. and now they're, that's, where, that's where they're at. And I, I just, you know... It it shouldn't be that hard. I, I think there's a lot of value to be derived from it. I think I think it was interesting with the the brother that spoke at the academy, where you know California is trying one, and was it Ca- California yeah. or Florida? California. Yeah. California. Um, so they started one, and now they're seeing how that that works, and then it, you know moving out from that. But you know I've thought about this quite a bit after talking with a lot of folks for for many years about doing things like this. And again, this is just my opinion that um, I think if we start small and sort of like we have with the Lodge of Research, where you have to be a Pennsylvania Mason in a warranted lodge, and then you can have an affinity lodge. You can have a cigar lodge where you're not conferring degrees but and you're not, you know, someone has to go through a regularly warranted lodge, but then you can join this as a secondary lodge. And then what better way to get members in because they want to belong to Cigar Lodge, but the only way they can do that is by joining a local lodge in their area. And 
you start small like that and you move forward. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, it it might it might go out to being bigger and better things where they can actually confer degrees or, you know, depending on what the ground law it says. I don't know. I'm just in, right now I'm in my head. Ed Stum is conferring a degree. Yes. He's yeah. always conferring a degree. Yeah. Of it, some kind. He he's the best. He is. He, he's he's the pinnacle of masonry. I love it. <laughs> Jack, I definitely agree with you on that. <laughs> um, with the affinity. You look at how many members join Blue Lodge and they go through their degrees, they might go to a meeting or two and then you never see them again. Yeah. It's like because I know the meetings are exciting and it brings a lot of joy to them and you know, it makes them <laughs> Like get him out of here. To come get, back. Just get out right now. Get, <laughs> um, and look, the, the, the worshipful masters do a great job on doing programs in, for their lodges to make it fun, <laughs> exciting, and educational. But you're going to have those amount of people that that doesn't do it for them. And if you bring it to something personable that they like, whether it's smoking cigars, whether it's having bourbon together with some friends, whether it's going fishing or haunting or whatever – they want to do it'll make them show up to blue lodge mm-hmm. because that's where their now friends are that they hang out with every day and like you said then they'll be like go you know what it's not that bad maybe maybe i will go through the chairs maybe i will learn the work so you're getting those percentage of members that normally would just walk away mm-hmm. instantly now you're giving them a second chance to do something else in masonry with the group with brethren and in the long run, potential for them to even move through the line, learn degree work, and be successful in Blue Lodge and in other uh, uh, members of uh, Blue Lodge. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what the, what the tenor is uh, in Grand Lodge because obviously Grand Lodge has to, has to be in favor of such a thing and it has to be mm-hmm. a, a program that comes from them. I don't, I don't know what Grand Line thinks other than it isn't, it isn't actively moving forward. So I don't know whether they object to it or they're just waiting for it to happen. I don't know. Um, but it, it I, I think there's a huge like, – like Ricky, like you were just saying, guys come in, they, they get involved in something that, that their friends are involved in, and that, that tends to draw them in. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's more likely than not. And why we don't do it, I, I'm not sure that I understand. I don't think it's, I don't think it's ever been overlooked – by Grand Lodge, because to tell you the truth, I mean, I, you know, with all the exposure that I've had to Grand Lodge, they are constantly trying to look at ways to better the fraternity mm-hmm. and to bring members in and to bring, you know, valued members into the lodges and stuff like that. And I think it just might be something that that has to gain traction and has to gain interest. Wait and, for its right moment. Yeah. Yes. Wait for the yeah. bell to ring. Yeah. Better to listen to the Masonic Light podcast to get those educational uh, chances there. Larry's hard work okay. we need well, to do. Th- those of you that were wondering what that ringing noise was, it's it's Larry's pacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> so before we uh, go get the AED unit. Uh, <clears throat> it's on me... the third floor, Larry. Go get it. <laughs> go get it, Larry. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to take a break here in a minute. But uh, we want to thank our sponsors. We failed to mention this earlier. Oh, geez, Tim. You had it. one. I, no, you had a lot of I jobs. I have a lot of jobs. But anyway, our sponsors tonight, who one of whom you've already heard from, George J. Grove and Sons. Who's been around for how long? Over 60 years. Whoa, 60, wow, 60 years. years. And you That's might, a lot of years. You might hear a new... George doesn't look that old. He doesn't look that old. No. no not at He's all. got nice teeth, too. Hireman Solomon Cigars. That we were talking about a moment ago. Right. So we're uh, hitting all these people. Intermezzo by Stephanie. Which is on the table in front of us right now. for tonight's... Crunch, crunch, crunch. Yes. Uh, Scott <laughs> Helm Electric. <laughs> and tonight, beginning tonight, we have a new sponsor. Yes, yes, we do. Oh, really? Two Pillars Apparel. Josh. Say that th- real quick without popping a P. Josh, Josh is going to... Tell us about Two Pillars Apparel, Josh. Oh, no. He's going to do it later. This is where he drops in the ad that he's going yeah, to record drop in later. The ad in a few minutes. But anyway, um, and we also, most importantly, want to thank all of our Patreon subscribers. Larry, turn your Larry, phone off. For the love of God, Larry. <laughs> we've been doing this for eight years. Eight years, Larry. Larry, well, Larry, I've been doing this for about 20 minutes. <laughs> and, I, and I got the gist of it. 
<laughs> All kind of noise is coming from over that side I'm of the room. I'm telling you what. Oh, my God. All I need is the up. ESPN notice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness nobody in Philly's playing sports tonight. <laughs> but uh, we also want to thank uh, our Patreon, our patrons on Patreon, uh, for as little as one dollar a month. Just one dollar. Just a dollar. You can be a contributing sponsor of this show, um, and we will love you long time. We will love you long time. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we encourage you to visit all of our social media sites or. You can give us a phone call at Larry. What's our phone number? One three one five five nine six. What is that? An eight or a seven? Something, 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 Make it easy. Something. Okay, five nine Mason. Three one five five nine Mason. Three one five five nine Mason. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and somebody please grab Larry's phone and put it on silent. (laughs) Can I put it outside? And we'll be right back. As far back as the mid-1800s, records exist describing the pre-meaning tradition of brethren smoking cigars during and after gatherings. To this day, the practice of smoking cigars remains very much alive in many lodges. This custom is considered a time for brethren to relax, exchange ideas, and enjoy the simplicity and fellowship that is the very essence of our brotherhood. This is what Hireman Solomon Cigars is all about. Our starting principles are to bring Masonic brethren together in the harmony of a good cigar. Pull up a chair, sit back, Light up any of our premium cigars and enjoy the history. Hiram and Solomon Cigars can be found at fine cigar retailers. For a complete list, visit HiramandSolomonCigars.com or check them out on social media to find out when they'll be at a live event near you. Hiram and Solomon Cigars is pleased to be the official cigar of the Masonic Light Podcast. And we're back. Tonight's guest is Brother Jack Brobst, um, past district deputy of Masonic District number 58. You got it. Oh, yes. Doesn't happen often, but... Ask him tomorrow. Ask him tomorrow. Uh-huh. That's right. So, Jack, um, you completed your term as district deputy last year. Mm-hmm. How long did you serve? Ten years. Ten years. Sucker. So... Um, What did you think the job was when you started? I had a pretty good handle on it because uh, Brother Carl Berger. Larry. (laughs) Had, uh, he was coming up on the end of his fifth, on his fifth year and he was planning on retiring. So we had the talk and um, at the same time, the districts were merged. Wait a minute, we had the talk. (laughs) We had the talk. So I, I can't after, let that go. I'm yeah. sorry. I just... So I was uh, I was very active in the district, primarily with the school of instruction as an assistant principal, and uh, I regularly traveled and did programs throughout the district. So I guess I caught his attention, and you know he pulled me aside the one day and he said, "I'm I'm planning on retiring as in my fifth year at the end of my fifth year, and I would really be interested to see if you would." be interested in becoming a district deputy. And at that time, I was still, you know, working some swing shifts at work and everything else. And I thought, you know, uh, I stay active in the lodge. I stay active in the other bodies and everything else. I, this is something that I would be interested in doing. And we had a talk about, you know, what the requirements were and uh, what the responsibilities were. And, uh, you know, coming from... Uh, what I do for employment, it sort of fell hand in hand, and and he, he he was putting my name in, but then the Grand Lodge merged the district. Oh, that's right. So we had five lodges, and when he retired, they said, okay, we're going to split you up. So then that put me on uh, basically a sabbatical for a couple of years until uh, the district was remerged two more times over. Wow. <coughs> And uh, the we ended up in District 58. Brother Bob Briggs was planning on retiring in his fifth or sixth year, and the other past district deputies in the uh, 
district got together and you know told him that told him that they wanted me as district deputy so i was offered the job went through the the did in, they not interview know you, did they not know you very well is that why they were? actually they did ah, because okay. i travel i traveled regularly in and out of the district you're a pretty busy district deputy i mean i saw you a lot of places and i don't go very much you used to scare yeah. me huh when Jack I first did? met Jack, I thought at Scar, a different place, I thought, Jack, he's kind of rigid. He's a big <laughs> fellow. Scared of, I've been a Mason for 50 years, but he's still frightened. He's kind of a tight ass, though. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We went, I know. You don't until, know Jack. Until, <laughs> until I saw him dance in front of his lodge. No, well, yeah, when, video, oh, when yes. he did Baby said, Shark. Oh, oh yes. Yes. okay. Yes. Yes. If you're listening, go to YouTube Jack and look up Jack Probst Baby Shark. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I forgot about that. It was out there forever. It was classic. That was a challenge that I put forward to all my lodges that <laughs> so that may be one of the qu- answers to a, que- a question coming up but continue so i uh grandmaster Herrett's project was to digitize all the grand lodge records mm-hmm. and uh i put the challenge out to the lodges that if they raised two thousand dollars i would do the baby shark dance in full regalia and uh, <laughs> Of course, as Freemasons, they stepped up to the challenge. And Absolutely. I did Baby Shark, and every now and then I get a, a little notice from YouTube and Facebook saying, hey, you know, you, somebody looked at this again, and I think the last time I looked, there was like 20,000 plus views <laughs> on it. So you're about to get about 4 million yes. listeners, or yes. new viewers on six planets. Yeah, so, so it, it was it was fun. Uh, I, I did it in about three takes, and uh, yeah. It was brilliant. It was Madonna worthy. Oh, was it? Yeah, I'm it glad. Was. I'm glad to hear. I absolutely it. laughed yeah. out loud. Yeah, Josh, I'll have to link that on the uh, show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, it was you know we had a lot of fun and um, we made our we made the money and to order a worthy project and I was happy with them. Excellent. Yeah. So what was what was your greatest learning over the ten years about either being a deputy or or your lodges in general <laughs> or any of that? I think my – I don't want to say my leadership skills improved, but I had a better understanding of how the minds of Masons worked, and especially in a, a pure volunteer organization, because we all hear that. It, you know, this is a volunteer organization. Mm-hmm. But there, there's more to that, and you know, reminding folks, reminding the brethren that they took an obligation, especially as officers, uh, to make – do what they need to do to help their lodges out and lead their lodges. And I think that was, that was the thing. I, I grew with them. Uh, I learned a lot that not all lodges are the same. They all have their own idiosyncrasies. And even traveling around the state, um, I, I really learned that every lodge truly is different. That they, although we have ritual, the ritual is different. Ritual doesn't account. No, every, ritual is the ritual same. Doesn't, the well, ritual does not account for culture. This is true. And yeah. every lodge has its own culture. Absolutely. And yeah. that's important to understand. I, I heard it when I first came in as deputy and I started making the rounds. Uh, I heard many times where this is the our way mm-hmm. of doing things. I'm like, as long as your way meets with my way, I'm okay. Yeah. That's if good. it doesn't, then we're going to have to have a chat. But, mm-hmm. you know, fortunately, most of the times it was just little odds and ends. And, but, yeah, I think, I think that was the biggest thing is uh, learning how to work with people, uh, different ages too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had worshipful masters that were in their 20s, and I had worshipful masters that were in their 60s. And they all had different skills, skill sets, and, and people skills. People skills are the big thing, and I tried to get that – into the lodges and especially the new lodge officers that, you know, you need their help. You are supporting them, even though you're leading them, that you need to treat everybody with respect and, and move forward with it. What, and this is what I was mentioning earlier. Do you have any regrets? I think I would have changed. I, I initially, when I went in, um, knowing, all the, the players, knowing the lodges, knowing how they worked and everything else, I went in, I introduced myself, and basically I, I stepped back. I don't want to say I didn't get engaged, but I stepped back just to get a better insight 
into the backgrounds of the lodges, how the secretaries were working, how the treasurers, the trustees and everything. And I, and I honestly think, and I, I tell some of the deputies that I mentored over the past and, and even the new deputies now, that they have to come up with goals and objectives for their, their district themselves and their officers and their lodges and to, to move forward with it right away. Because if you don't, you set a precedence where what we're doing is okay, you know, but don't go in there with being a hammer and a nail either. Right. You know, you got to work with them. And I think I, I would have just changed that a little bit. I would have set up better goals and objectives for the lodges and the district and then went in there from day one and said, guys, here's my expectations. I want to know what your expectations are of me and we'll work and we'll get it done. So, yeah, I think that's the one thing I would change. Ricky has a question. Yeah, I got uh, two questions, actually. So 10 years as district deputy. So is that like the uh, like automatic retirement? Yes. 10 years? So in order to be considered past district deputy, you have to serve at least five years. At 10 years, you automatically time out. So I reached full, full term, and that was it. So out of those 10 years, I know it's tons of accomplishments that you've made. Is there any time that stands out that would be like something that you look back at as like the most proudest moment of being a district deputy? Great question. Hmm. There's a lot. I mean, there were officers that I I mentored from the time they came in to the lodge as newly made master masons all the way up to that even one or two that I actually even gave all the degrees to. And then they ended up being worshipful master of their lodge. Now, thinking about that, you have, so I'm a district deputy grandmaster with 10 years, and I'm in, in conferring degrees, and then that, that guy is becoming an officer within my term. So, Impressive. you know, but it, it's, it's not the way it should be. But it was very impressive, and, and and the other thing too is I think another great thing was is I was given we, the deputies mentor new deputies, and I had two great um, mentees that uh, I really had a good time with, and it, it was interesting to see, you know, five or six years in, to see being a new deputy through their eyes, and go oh I remember doing that, and here's some I never ever told them that. Unless it was a Masonic law question, but I never told them how to do something. It's like, here's what I did. Here's some ideas. You know your district. You know your lodges. Go forth and prosper. And uh, I think that's, you know, that, that was some of my, and then, of course, you know, the odds and ends helping, helping the lodges out with different problems that they've had and anniversaries and things like that. That nice. was always fun. Is there anything that you would have uh, liked to have done that you didn't do? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, throughout that whole term, I really tried to get the lodges more involved with social activities, traveling and visiting each other, traveling outside the district. Uh, we tried quite a few different events. Um, some worked, some different didn't, where we, you know, we had a day at the shooting range. We had a Halloween dance. We had socials and stuff like that. You'd get the same group of people out at each one of them. Um, and I think I really should have, personally, I think I should have tried harder. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think that was one of the things. I wanted to get these guys out and it, moving. It's tough to get social events together because mm -hmm. the 12 guys that are involved that are going to come out to your social event are the 12 guys that are in chapter, mm -hmm. that are the same 12 guys that are in commandery. That are the same twelve guys that are in council. Scottish Rite, okay, yeah. <laughs> council, and everything yeah. else. And I'm like, council. I don't want to yeah. see those guys anymore. Oh my yeah. god! Yep. So it's it's it, it that that social part of it that we all join for. I think I think most of us join because we're you know we're excited about the the, the fraternity part of it and being a part of something. And then um, it, it's it's really tough. We've tried innumerable times. We were upstairs. I gave you the tour of the lodge about you know the pool room. We have we have these two giant Brunswick pool tables that from that are over a hundred years old, 
Um, and there, it's the most underutilized room mm. in the building. It's been ninety years since someone used one. Well, no, they're they're <laughs> up there once in a while, but it, it's like it's just such a shame that you know yeah. it, because we're also in you know involved in our own lives and and you know it's um, it's just tough to get people out on a consistent basis. That's why I love Grotto. Yeah. Because Grotto, there's there's no there's no overhead to Grotto, right? No. You just show up and have dinner. Oh, is that the dinner I went to the other night? Yeah. yeah, it was like <laughs> exactly. Everyone was like, "Why are you so happy here?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were the only guy smiling in the pictures. Yeah, uh, but but it's you know it's it's the one event that you can just kick back and relax and and I know every month there's going to be a Grotto meeting and it's going to be fun and and you know we can throw stuff at the speaker and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, it's it's tough trying to get those things started. There was a lot of people in in the lodges that never saw lodges in the other sides of the district. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we have a traveling school, so at least those brethren got out. You know, it changed lodge to lodge. Every I love month. that. So they got to see what the lodges look like, and it, you know, before the meetings and even during the meetings, you know, I would always say, okay, who has what going on, and then say, okay, you got to go. Mm-hmm. And and outside the district, and so yeah, yeah, it's it. I think we don't play that up enough, and I think that's another important thing that we need to do is have like a master Masonic calendar, because you know I know just scheduling cigar lodges, I get twenty thousand emails saying, oh, that's this or that's that 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 day, and I mean, fortunately, it's on a Sunday. But it would be so nice for guys to be able to, brethren, to look, go and look and say, hey, you know, Lodge number 123 is meeting on this night. I'm going to be in that area. Why not? And this is the program. So why not go and, and check it out? So it's, I think that's important, too. So Larry gets one question per show. Uh, All right. Larry, Larry what's your question? No, I, I, uh, I, don't, save I it? don't have a question. I'm thinking about something else. I'm thinking about the Robert Burns dinner you guys went to. I want to talk to you about that before, but I don't want to interrupt the flow here. Oh, okay. Well, or, so have he's gonna, I, he's, he's, or have he's, I already interrupted he's, the he's flow? Going, he's going to bank his question for the next hour. Larry's flowing. <laughs> <laughs> so being from the Pottsville Lodge, mm-hmm. uh, I heard rumor that they would actually, after lodges, sometimes go to Yingling Brewery and have private tours. So for many years, what? so Pulaski Lodge, number 216, my home lodge, and at the time there was Pottsville Lodge, number 730, which we merged together. Uh, after our officer installation, election and installation, we would retire up to the Yingling Raskeller. And uh, Dick Yingling is not a mason. His father was, however. And uh, have a, a nice event there. Uh, unfortunately, at some point in time, not the Masonic fraternity, but other organizations um, <coughs> sort of messed the area up, and that put an end to that. So, wow. Boo. yeah, that would have been really nice. It was to awesome that. to yeah, it was awesome to go up there. And I went to school with Dick Yingling, grade school. Mm-hmm. That was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. He was a year ahead of me, and actually, he scared me to death. He was a school bully. Oh. <laughs> You sure it wasn't his and grandfather? Years, years ago, <laughs> later, and went on the went to the tour. And actually, I didn't go down to this basement or you know down the tunnels. And I said to the one lady, "It was does, does Mr. Gingley come in a lot?" No, I said, "Tell him that Larry Maris, who used to be at Garfield Square School with him, said he was a school bully and he scared me to death." And she laughed. <laughs> he walked up the old school. Both and now ways. his daughters own the place. <laughs> oh yes. They're Very doing good. they're doing a bang up job with oh, that they too. Are, aren't they yes. really phenomenal yep. phenomenal. Sorry about that. No, it's good. That's great. All good news. So Jack, it's been great to have you here tonight. Um, Thank you. Thank we, you very much. Oh, oh no, no, wait. The okay, other Jack. Never mind. Right, yeah, sorry. Jack. The other Jack. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to be here, but you didn't have to be here tonight. I didn't have he to could be have here. been at the Joshua Association. I had a free pass. Yes, so we got three Joshuas and a Josh. <laughs> Right. And, and two I, jacks. That's and, a full house. There you go. Come on. House. And I know where Josh lives because uh, Timmy threw a cup we, at his we house. Threw a trash right. in his yard. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take one more break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to hear from our brother Walter with the news, and we will play copious news with our guest. All right. In Masonic news today. Pop 
popular Masonic secretary, Tim Dedman, has been seized by federal authorities, threatening bodily harm to lodge audit committees across the Commonwealth. Said Dedman, come on, people, what the hell? That's the Masonic news, so mote it was. <laughs> that, that is very plausible. I have to admit that Tim, I, I think you should get an a act of valor for all the lodge audits that you had to endure over the last couple of months here. He had calls while we're sitting here recording. Yeah, I mean, we start, we, five minutes into the show, I get a call from a district deputy, and I know what it's about. So, oh, guys, please get your audits done. Come on, people. Trustees, please share your reports with it's your numbers. secretaries. It's numbers. Just add them together. It oh balances out. God. Everybody's happy it's springtime except for Tim. It'll oh, work. gosh. I've, you know, I may have to check myself into rehab before this is done. You know, it's, well, nobody likes a quitter, Tim. I know. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's been a great episode tonight. We have one more thing to do. Um, Jack, what, what time is it? It's time for... Copious Dues! Tonight's a special episode of Copious Dues. Tell us, Tim, why is it so special? Well, because we have two dues carrying members. It's a double live gonzo. It's a double header. (laughs) So tonight, we have with us past district deputy Jack Brost. And uh, Jack is an occasional listener to the show. And knows that we're going to do this to him. So when I said, Jack, write down how much you pay. And he was like, bang, right there with his number. So, Jack, we're going to guess how much you pay in copious dues. Tim Dedman, what do you think Jack pays for copious dues? I'm going to say $913. That's $913. Larry, what do you think Jack pays in copious dues? $685. Oh, wow. You are so out. <laughs> you are so out. He's going for the under. That's <laughs> yeah, what he's doing. 1970, yeah. that was right. <laughs> yeah. Josh, what do you think our friend Jack pays for copious dues? 1400 Ooh. <laughs> this isn't one, Seth one Anthony. Four. Wait, was that a decimal point? Wait, uh, uh, comma, it's comma. One thousand four dollars. One thousand and four dollars. One thousand and four dollars. And I think Jack pays one thousand and one. It's like Ooh. the Price is Right. We're Ooh. slicing this one thin. Yes, All we are. All right. All right. So, Jack, should we do Ricky next? Well, let's do them individually. Individually. That's what I thought. Jack, tell us, how much do you get hosed for copious dues? I pay about $778. Oh, Oh my gosh. Larold. Larold went. (laughs) Larold took the under and ran away with it. He took the under. He was on the horse. He took the under. Well done, Larry. Well done, Larry. All right. All right. All right. Now. Ricky Martini. Ricky Martini. How much do you... No, don't tell us how much. We're going to guess. Josh, how much do you think Ricky pays for copious dues? Well, man. uh, $800.36. I'm not retired for masonry. Such a careful calculation that was. Tim. I'm going to say $801. Larry Harris, what do you think Ricky pays for? $476. Ah, taking a, that's my Blue Lodge dues. <laughs> right. Four hundred and, and Jack number. picks $477. Oh. <laughs> so, Ricky, tell us, what do you pay for copious dues? $760. Oh. <laughs> Who's that, Tim? Oh, Wah, wah, wah. I well, think that's me. Larry again. No, I was a dollar over Larry. Dollar. Yeah. Okay, you're right. You I got your system. I got your system. The dues will only increase from here. That's right. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for playing. Thank you for playing <laughs> copious dues. <laughs> All right. All right. Great night tonight. 
So, Larry, what you got coming up? Ghost and Gridiron. No Thursday way, morning. really? really? Mount Food. Mount Family Diner, 9 what, o'clock. What do you all do there? What do we all do? We just eat breakfast and chat. Okay. And oh. Uh-oh. Lodge in the um, April, first Tuesday in April. What's the date? Do you know? Uh, nah. What's the know. program? Do you know? Nah, I don't know. I'll just be there. Okay, good. Jo- Josh will be there, too, I think. Josh coming? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's my uh, Masonic birthday. Oh, you get candy, right? Oh. No, they, they Congratulations. Did with, they did away with the candy. Yeah, they did away with the candy, yeah. Oh, you all cut Why? Back, huh? Why? And I have strict. executive Real board strict. meeting for Tall Cedars. Okay. Yeah. Well, Larry, I'm impressed. Tell them I know somebody who makes candy. So. Yeah. That's, we did use, we, we used her candy, one that was gone. They didn't know her anything anywhere. Huh. huh. How about that? How yeah. about that? But we gave the last of the Mad Hatter away. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Jack number one. I have coming up uh, my AMD Cincinnati Council meets on Friday night. We're being visited by our, I don't know what he is, district guy. Poobah. Poobah is coming to visit us to see how crazy we are. Wait a minute. Oh, I think I know. No, never mind. Go ahead. Yes, you know, you know him. Yeah. I have uh, ritual training. I, I meet with my candidates every Monday night to teach them the dialogue, the, um, the oath and obligations. And then we also dissect and digest the work that they've seen. Uh, I do that Monday nights. I am also committed now to helping the, our lodge officers learn their work. And that's a huge, huge commitment. I, I sort of... Um, Ask them to let me please help them learn their work, and that's going really well. They're all very excited, and um, we 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 had a scenario, and I don't know if this is widespread or not, but we had we had a, a, a an officer in the line who learned the third degree, and he became the third degree guy, and nobody else felt obligated to learn the third degree. So now we've got the whole line is missing the third degree. And we, we just, we can't have that. So we have to go back and we have to work on backfilling that. So um, the guys are set up. They're very excited. They want to commit to it. Um, so I'm helping our guys do that. And that's like, you know, an hour, one hour, you know, once a week. Um, what do you have? What do you need? Let's, let's, let's keep it moving forward. So that's exciting. Uh, I, and I think we'll be able to to get the lodge on really solid footing in about a year and a half or two years. Mm. So. Great. Jack number two, Jack Probes. Uh, I have two Grandmaster visitations coming up, uh, one to Eureka West Shore Lodge. Yes, you do. And one to Mount Olivet Lodge. So, yeah, looking forward to those. What's the night of the Mount Olivet Lodge? The following Monday. So oh. the 8th. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Jack yes, yes. so I can't go to that. I'd love to yeah. go to that. Go to chapter. Yeah. Ricky. Well, tomorrow night I have a Scottish Rite Club dinner up in McAllisterville, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. For You a, just made that up. McAllisterville, right? Yeah. No, no, you, no. You made it's that McAllisterville okay. town. Is that you, a thing? You hit the North Pole and you keep going north. Okay. Got it. <laughs> it's right. north of the wall in Pennsylvania. <laughs> McAllisterville town, Burke. Yep. For, yeah. I'm going to represent the princes of Jerusalem for the Harrisburg uh, consistory. And uh, then I have chapter meeting uh, April 1st. <sighs> Go to chapter. Chapter is, is fantastic. We make it a lot, a lot of fun. Cool. What chapter are you in? Uh, Perseverance, chapter number 21. Wow. They're very old. And, yeah. and when is that? First Monday. Yep, April 1st. First Monday? So I could be lying and saying it's April 2nd. How would you know? It's April 1st. Ah, ah. I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, also, I have uh, our Harrisburg Snyder Lodge, number 629 Blue Lodge, stated meeting on April 2nd, where we have... Bobby Snyder Ooh. giving the uh, program for how many Masons does it take to screw in a light bulb? I've nice. heard that program. Oh, that's a great program. Now, I told him it would take one, but he told me he just nodded <clears throat> going, uh-uh, Mm-mm. uh-uh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm in for a deed of awakening there. <laughs> that's uh, great. I got April 4th to Thursday. I have commandery uh, at um, program number uh, 11 in, in Harrisburg uh, for their stated meeting. And I have our extra meeting where we're doing a third degree for Harrisburg Snyder Lodge on the 10th. And, of course, consistory 
on the 12th of April for their stated meeting. Gotcha. It's a couple full full weeks here. I've had a hard time fitting stuff in to my busy schedule outside of Masonic uh, events, but I've been able to do that. And one it's night a month? Great. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, Jack. One, if... Um, if you uh, if I am able to use your pool tables in cigar area, I I will be your Tyler for uh, after the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm the Tyler right now, so absolutely you, you can be the that. assistant Tyler. Assistant Tyler, right? I like there that. You go. I can let you. Yeah, we need an assistant Tyler. Right? Ricky, absolutely. I just want you to know I'm impressed. You went through all of those activities, and Larry did not groan once. Well, when I that's... try to do that, he groans every time. <laughs> Well, you know, he's he's he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a busy guy. <laughs> he has a lot of stuff going on, and he I, does. you know, I commend him for that. Yep. I mean, you've done a hundred shows. You're getting tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, how about you? Uh, as as Larry mentioned, we have Blue Lodge coming up. Um, I've got some other stuff going on. And Got stuff. the episode, of course. Thanks Absolutely. for that detailed analysis, yes, Josh. Thank we you very much. You seem that. very busy. Very Josh, busy. Very, very busy. So, as Jack number two mentioned on April the first, and this I actually got a letter going. Are you really kidding us? Is this for real? Um, Eureka West Shore Lodge number three hundred and two will have its April stated meeting, and prior to that, we will host the District Three Oyster Feed, um, which uh, is a great night and especially if you like oysters, and we have expanded. For those who don't, we offer a steak option. That's a great option. Um, great option. Jack, I believe you will be at this one, and didn't mention it, on the 6th, we will be at the uh, operatives meeting uh, oh, yeah. in Lancaster. Yeah, I think you're getting a degree, right? I am getting my fourth degree in yeah, operatives. Yes. Whatever. Right. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Congrats. On the 8th, uh, Samuel C. Perkins Royal Arts Chapter. I'll be at that. Uh, I will also be at the... Harrisburg uh, Scottish Rite uh, stated meeting where we will be joined by oh gosh what's his title Walt no not his not his name oh our uh, um, supreme supreme commander, commander, allied, commander allied allied of masonic forces <laughs> yeah of the Darth, northern masonic jurisdiction Darth, Walt, Walt, Darth Vader's father <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> Darth, <laughs> the guy from Boston Walt, Walt Wheeler uh, he's actually from one of the ice or Michigan, Michigan. He's yes, actually he is. from Michigan. Well, very, very nice, Boston. very nice and, man. Very and then nice the next guy. day, he will very be nice at the uh, celebration of the 150th anniversary of the Land, uh, Lancaster Lodge of Perfection. Mm. Larry, you gonna be there? No. Okay. You remember that group? Yep. Not going. Nope. Larry, I will. We'll drive you. No. <laughs> and then the last thing, I'm going to give you all fair warning. On the uh, day of our, our our next episode is going to be recorded on April the 10th. And um, earlier that day, I'm, I'm going to have a colonoscopy. So uh. <laughs> I should be in real good shape by the time I get to the Things episode. Things will look very clearly by then. Yes. The good news is, is the worst part will be over. It will be the first time in years that you, you are not that, full of will. shit. That's if right. If there is only you one will. chair in the waiting room, don't sit in it. <laughs> right. Exactly. You so, will have an appetite. Uh, I'll tell that. you uh, why I'm having to have that on this date after we're done tonight. But uh, anyway. We're all going to be sitting on the edge of our seat. I'm sure. Yeah. Bury sure. your soul. soul will tell. I know. Yeah. Are we going to all give you hugs when we're done? <laughs> 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 all right. So, uh, uh, oh. Josh, open that gate. Oh, geez. No, wait. Come on. Uh, let I'm the chickens right. out. I'm all right. And, uh, but Ricky, are you a turtle? Ooh, good question, Jack. Are you a turtle? Yeah. Jack, are you a turtle? That's your sweet ass I am. There you go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky, we may have to take care of something I, later. Yeah, we, yeah. we can take care of that right yeah, now. Sounds can. great. Sounds great. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Larry. This is Larry. I'm waiting for Tim to do what he's going to do. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Special thanks to Effort of Lodge 665 for allowing us to continue right. to meet here. All right. If they knew what was going on down here, that could change. Anyway, to Josh Lamberton. <laughs> to Josh Lamberton, our producer and director. Jack Harley, our news director. Tim Dedman, our and marketing Graham director. To Michelle Snyder and Doug Maidenford and Austin Schifrin, Masonic Lake contributors. They do a great job, by the way. And to our listeners who always make doing this show worthwhile. 
This is Larry Mira saying thanks for listening. And remember, have fun and do good. Good night. Or good day, wherever you are. Good day. Yeah. Hey, we forgot to mention, help promote scouting out there. One of our uh, Patreons suggested we say that. So we just did. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.